I love the Sea of Galilee in the morning. All right, we are in Magdala, a town in northern Galilee. It was a fishing village, and this was the home of Mary Magdalene. This was a first century synagogue in Magdala. It's one of the only first century synagogues found in Israel. Magdala was destroyed by the Romans in the Jewish Roman War. Josephus reports that. As the Romans approached, the people of Magdala picked up rocks and tore things down to build barriers to block the roads. And then, since this was a fishing village, they jumped in their boats, and so the Romans had to go get them on the Sea of Galilee. And Josephus also reports that the blood of the people of Magdala turned the Sea of Galilee red. Pretty awesome tile work over here on the side of the city guy. This is the Migdal Stone. You can see the menorah on it. And this is the earliest instance found of a menorah in Galilee. Even more so than the Star of David, is the symbol of Jews. There are several sections to the synagogue. What's been identified is an entrance hall, a study hall, and a chamber for the Torah scroll. And the stone there with the symbol of the menorah on it may have been for laying the Torah on while reading. This is a market area, and this was a fishing village, so a lot of the bowl-shaped things or enclosures here, this would have had to do with fishing, having fish, salting fish so that you could sell them in other areas. This is what's left of a first century road. So this is what would have been blocked by the people of Magdala as the Romans were approaching. This is blue, an Israeli energy drink. Basically crowd my guy in a can. All right, it is really windy up here, but we came all the way up to the northern border of Israel. If you see this green area right here, that's basically the uh, northern area of Israel. And if you look, try to zoom in, if you look over here to where you have trees, that's actually Syria. So that's where you cross over into Syria. Over in the distance, way over in the distance here, you have this giant mountain range that's uh, often mistakenly referred to as Mount Hermon. Hermon is a mountain range, but the Hermon mountain range is along the border between Syria and Lebanon. So Lebanon on the other side of these mountains, Syria over here, Israel in the green. And if we look over to these buildings right here, that is a UN headquarters and notice notice which side of the border they want to be on
came up on the roof of this building. This used to be the Syrian military headquarters. Built for Syria by the Russians. Which is why you can see this beautiful Russian architecture, obviously influenced by the classics. This was taken in the 1967 war and is now used, one, by film crews who want a really cool looking dilapidated building and for training in really bad terrorist situations, mainly what happens if terrorists attack a school. You can see, even though this wasn't a school, it's set up like a school. So this is where Israeli police and soldiers do training for those kinds of situations. If you woke up and didn't know where you were, of course, you'd assume that you're in Detroit, but you're not. We are right along the Syrian border. The Syrian border is out that way, although we have to use the term border lightly. Part of the definition of a border is that it's recognized by the countries on the opposing sides of the border, and Israel has no border with Syria that is recognized by both sides. Israel has a border with Egypt, Israel has a border with Jordan, there is no recognized border with Syria, but we're at a sort of border for practical purposes as of right now. Here we have some words of wisdom. Go this way. We are born to die. And don't jump. This building reminds me of Sam Shimon's YouTube channel. Bombed out and depleted. <laughs> the Russian contribution to global architecture. Massive overuse of rebar. So these are some of the ruins of Capernaum. Capernaum is one of the most important cities in the New Testament. Five of Jesus' disciples were from here, and Jesus himself lived here for a while. Um, it was a great launching point if you wanted to travel around uh, Galilee, especially the Sea of Galilee, since uh, we're right beside the Sea of Galilee. And this is the home of uh, some of the coolest stories in the New Testament. So, for instance, um, when people wanted to bring a paralytic to Jesus so that Jesus could heal him, and the crowd around Jesus was so massive that they couldn't get to him, and so they actually climbed up on the roof of the house and tore up the roof and lowered, lowered the paralytic down through the roof so that Jesus could heal him, and Jesus healed him. Uh, yep, that was here in Capernaum. This is a site that is believed to be Peter's house. Not the things we're looking at now, like Peter's house below this. And there is some ancient graffiti identifying this as a pilgrimage site for Christians, and some of the references are interpreted to be to Peter, but the, the basic evidence runs as follows. There is, in the fifth century, a church built here, and prior to that, there was some sort of meeting hall underneath, and all of this was built upon a house that goes back to the first century and that was expanded upon over a few centuries. So 
Uh, basically, something started as a house and then became a gathering hall. And then once Christians were allowed to build churches, a church was built upon it. And basically, in the 4th and 5th centuries, there was an emphasis in Christianity on building churches on very important sites. So the question is, what important house would have been in Capernaum that Christians would have wanted to mark and commemorate with a church? Well, Peter's house is a pretty good explanation. All right, now check this out. So this is a church which is built over the ancient church, which is built over a meeting room which was supposedly modified from Peter's house. Now what's interesting is this is kind of the view that the paralytic would have had being lowered down. Uh, this isn't what he would have seen because that uh, would have been a nice house back then, but uh, this is sort of the direction he'd have been looking. These are the remains of a late 4th century Jewish synagogue here in Capernaum. So, this wouldn't have been the synagogue that Jesus walked into, but this synagogue would have been built upon an earlier synagogue. And so, this is most likely the correct location. And so, we are walking where Jesus once walked. Now, there's a meeting room over here on the side, and some sort of study hall. So this is a very large synagogue. Now here's something that's cool. Over here, I'm not sure you can make that up. Oh yeah, it looks good. You see these uh, marks on the floor, little squares? There were apparently games etched into the stones for kids to play. If you needed to quiet some kids down, you'd give them a little game to play. And possibly games that were meant to teach them the Torah. Anyone want to translate this in the comment section? If you want to know how close Peter would have been to the water, this is a modern church built over the traditional site of Peter's house. And that is the Sea of Galilee. So here's the shore of Capernaum. And that is the Sea of of Galilee. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So Capernaum is in this direction. Bethsaida is a little farther. And then to the left would be Chorazin. That was the teaching triangle of Jesus. We focused in that area and everything you see here would be 
a visual aid as Jesus taught. This was his classroom. Taking a boat back to Tiberius. All right. This happened right around here. This is Mark chapter 6. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up onto the mountain to pray. Right over there. And when evening came, the boat was out to sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. At about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Right here. Wow. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Jesus got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded. Did that happen? Right here. Stupid wind and waves. Hey, hey, Galilean waters. Jesus owns you. Jesus walked all over your face. How did that feel? We are pulling into the port city of Tiberias along the Sea of Galilee. Notice that in the Gospels, you don't read about Jesus going and preaching in Tiberias. It's because during the time of Jesus, Tiberias was a city of pagans. It was built by the Roman Tetrarch of Galilee, Herod Antipas. He built it for pagans. He built the city on a graveyard, so devout Jews did not want to enter the city because they would be made ritually unclean. Herod eventually forced some Jews to move into the city, even though they didn't want to. But eventually, the city became an important, very important city for Jews. 